Well, good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I, for one, will rejoice and be glad in it. First and foremost, to my fellowship family, as always, and then to all of our friends and loved ones who tune in with regularity to our morning meditations, we greet you on this another Lord's Day. It's Take Charge Tuesday, September the 8th, 2020, and the Lord has blessed us uh, not only with another day's journey, but uh, we've experienced uh, the Labor Day weekend, and my hopes and my prayers are that you had a wonderful and safe holiday, uh, and that you enjoyed a family and uh, loved ones near and far. Um, we, for one, this past weekend had a virtual family reunion that was wonderful. And I certainly praise and thank God for that opportunity. Listen, I hope you woke this morning, awakened this morning with your um, clothes in your right mind, as the old saints would say, and you've done your self check and you've discovered all things are well, all things considered. I'm following up as always with our more thorough check, hoping and praying that you're doing well, not only physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Then also, of course, I want to share um, our meditational passage. It's birthed today out of Exodus chapter 14. And I want to share in your hearing um, one verse. No, two verses. Exodus 14, uh, verses 14 and 15. Exodus chapter 14, verses 14 and 15. It reads this way. The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. Verse 15 says, and the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. 14 says, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. 15 says, the Lord said unto Moses, wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. In context, the Israelites are now on the move from where the enemy had them to where God was taking them. They're now exiting Egypt after having been uh, under the evil um, bondage of Pharaoh for hundreds of years. Now they're in, on the move towards Canaan where God was taking them. Uh, they've exited, thus exodus, and are en route to Canaan, which is the promised land. The Bible says that they're uh, just outside of um, Egypt, and God had caused Pharaoh's heart to be hardened so that he wouldn't let the people go. And so when they left, Pharaoh was angry and took after them. We pick up the story wherein they're out of Egypt and they've come to the Red Sea. Pharaoh's behind them in hot pursuit with the Egyptian army. Uh, the Red Sea is in front of them. Mountains to the right and mountains to the left. And now they're complaining because uh, as they're complaining to, to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die? Um, Pharaoh's after us and we're going to die out here in the wilderness. Get this. It's then that God speaks to Moses and says to him, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And then he tells them, why are you complaining to me? Go speak to the Israelites and tell them, get this, go forward. Whenever you're moving, from where you've been to where God wants you to be. There's always this middle passage wherein you're challenged by the opposition, which is the adversary, because the devil doesn't ever want you to experience all that God has for you. And so in this movement from where you've been to where you're going, always expect opposition. This is what is happening in this particular passage with the Israelites and God, get this, literally hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he wouldn't let the people go and would chase after them. And get this, 
God decides I'm going to teach Pharaoh a lesson and show him how strong I am. But in so doing, he's also teaching the Israelite, the Israelites a lesson. Israel is also learning how powerful and how strong their God is. And that he's telling them, listen, I'm going to fight for you, but you hold your peace. Karash in the original Hebrew, hold your peace. Uh, it, it's literally the verb saying, you decide or you keep silent. You be quiet. You, you, you stand still and hush in, a, in, a, in essence. Be quiet and watch me work. One of the beautiful things about God is that he's determined to fight the battles for the believer. Why? Because his name is on the line. His reputation is on the line. He's vested in our victory. But we've got to get to a place where we sit back and watch him work and stop trying to fight our own battles. His promise is to fight for us. And many times the toughest part of the fight is us fighting with ourselves to be still. That's what David meant in Psalms 46 and 10. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted amongst all the heathens and in all the land. Many times the toughest part of the fight for us is to be still, is to be silent, is to let him work. His promise is he'll fight for us, but we've got to stop fighting for ourselves and understand he's vested in our victory. And ultimately the battle does not belong to us, it belongs to the Lord. This is an awesome lesson. The Israelites had to learn as they moved from Egypt to Canaan, from their bondage to their blessing, that they would face some enemies. And that's how the adversary works. He doesn't want you to get where God is taking you. And so, so often it is the natural proclivity for us to fight and fend for ourselves. But God reminds us, the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And then he says in verse 15, the Lord says to Moses, why are you complaining to me? Speak to Israel, tell the Israelites, go forward. In other words, don't let any battle stop you from getting to your blessing. Learn how to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. That's all I got for us this morning on this Take Charge Tuesday. And I bless and thank God for this, this word, this, this uh, refresher course on how spiritual movement works. You and I are destined for what God has for us. And do know that nobody but the devil is angry as we move forward. But all we have to do is be still and know that he's God and he will be exalted. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. That's all I got. Let's pray. Father, it's in the strong name of Jesus. Come we before you as always grateful, thankful for another day's journey. Another opportunity to be found present and accounted for in the land of the living. God, now we thank you for this, this reminder, this refresher course on kingdom movement. Thank you for reminding us that you are our God and we are your people and that uh, we can trust and believe that you'll fight our battles. God, we thank you now uh, for having kept us heretofore. We believe, God, that the best is still yet to come and we know, God, that greater uh, are the things that are ahead of us over and beyond the things that are behind us. Brace us now for uh, the battles that we'll engage in and remind us just to be still and to know that you're God and to hold our peace and ultimately um, watch you work. Thank you now, God, for each and every believer that is listening to the sound of my voice. And I pray uh, that as we move throughout the further parts of this day, you hold us in the hollow of your hands, keeping us safe from all manner of hurt, harm, danger, and or incident. 
And when all is said and done, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor forever. For it's in Christ Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Listen, look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. And until then, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, and the Lord cause his face to shine on you.